uh, during the first uh, during the first lecture and presentation, we are going to talk about briefly on what is biodiversity and why we should protect biodiversity. What is the difference between biodiversity and nature resources? How biodiversity changes by latitude and altitude? What are the biodiversity hotspots of the world today? What are the past five massive massive extinctions of biodiversity? And why we talk today for the sixth mass extinction of biodiversity? What are the primary threats of biodiversity? And what is conservation biology? And a good part of the presentation is going to be dedicated to conservation in practice when you will get more insights about the impacts or threats imposed by hydropower plants on biodiversity, having a special case, the Yosa River. So what is biodiversity? Any type and variety and immense richness of, of variation of living uh, world or biodiversity of life. Uh, it is composed of three components, which is diversity or variability of genes or genetic diversity, diversity of species and diversity of ecosystems and biomes. <clears throat> Why we should protect biodiversity? Many of you could jump to the species, but the, the core uh, and most important values of biodiversity are embedded within ecosystems and ecosystem services they provide uh, to humans as well. Uh, we always talk about food and raw materials we take from nature or by nature. Uh, from ground. We uh, have our oxygen we breathe, the clean water we we take, uh, materials and nutrient circulation, climate regulation, protection from inundation, avalanches and landslides and mudslides, health and healing from diseases, use of medicinal plants, recreation and spiritual values, ethical and cultural values, potential economic development such as tourism, all are interrelated and are, uh, deal, they are, all of them are uh, explained with the, the so-called ecosystem services that are granted to uh, humans. We divide them in four main components or uh, like provisions, provision services, supporting services, regulating services and culture uh, services, but all together. It makes that we humans cannot survive without nature and biodiversity. Species loss is irreversible. Today we know that we are only inheriting a small portion of the biodiversity that had been ever evolved in our planet. Only five, between one and five percent of the species that ever exist in the world are present day. Most of it has gone. Species loss is a, is a natural phenomenon, phenomenon, and species are replaced by other by other species that evolved during the uh, during the evolutionary process through natural su successions. But the species that are lost, they are lost forever. And biodiversity, we have to may, to always bear in mind, is a result of an evolution and adaptation process over the last hundred millions of years. <clears throat> what is the difference between biodiversity and nature resources? As early mentioned, biodiversity is part of the nature that is alive and includes every living thing on the earth. While nature, it's all the existing system created at the same time as the earth. All the features, forces and processes such as weather, sea and mountains. And natural resources are the sources that are drawn from nature and used with few modifications. This include sources of valued characteristics such as commercial and industrial use, aesthetic value, scientific interest and cultural value. In this context, sunlight, atmosphere, water, land, all minerals along with vegetation, wildlife are all natural resources. 
how biodiversity changes with latitude and altitude. Of course, we know already, it is nothing to be discovered, that when we move from the equator low altitude towards high latitudes, towards poles north and south, biodiversity decreases. The same is available when we start from the sea level, low altitude, low altitude to high altitudes. And by this picture, you could see with dark red uh, and orange, and they are all areas or high and rich biodiversities, while the dark blue or light blues are those that are of low biodiversity richness. To be a candidate as a biodiversity hotspots, an area, a region, or part of continent, should meet two criteria. First, it must have at least 1,500 vascular plants are endemics, which is to say it must have a high percentage of plant life found nowhere else on the planet. Uh, a hotspot, in other words, is irreplaceable. And it must have 30% more or less of its original natural vegetation. 35 hotspots, biodiversity hotspots are recognized on the earth and in this graph you could see those uh, and with the with the uh, with the red line you could see the outer borders of this uh, biodiversity hotspots and, and as you can see most of it are related with uh, lower altitudes latitudes and of course there are mega rich countries like in America, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, Peru, Venezuela, and the United States. In Asia, countries like China, Indonesia, India, Philippines, and Malaysia. In Africa, Madagascar, Democratic Republic of Congo, and South Africa. And in Oceania, Australia, and Papua New Guinea. All these countries altogether are home for more than 70% of the Earth biodiversity, and although the, their territory is only 10% of the Earth's surface. And let's jump to another issue, which is uh, um, big, five big mass extinctions in the past. Um, and you, it is just to show that uh, through this uh, graph that uh, you have other extinction events shown in blue, but you have also the big five mass extinctions that uh, are shown on uh, yellow. And when we say big mass extinctions, we have to recognize that more than 75% of the existing uh, species have been, has got extinct during these mass extinctions. And if you look at the how our planet uh, was uh, at the time when these six massive, these five massive uh, extinctions took place in our Earth, you could see how much has changed our planet. Uh, and of course, all these changes has been one of the reasons why we had these five mass extinctions. Asteroids must be another. Intensive volcanic activity associated with asteroids but shift of continental plates or masses has been all major uh, cosmic and planetary events that had huge impacts on, on wildlife. And, um, and overall, all these cases are at the very end physical factors and they have nothing to do with us, with humans. While today we're talking about another another way of extinction, massive extinctions. And uh, this is standing in front of us as one of the biggest challenges of humanity and human civilization that have ever, ever faced before. Today, we are at the brink of the sixth massive extinction. And this time the finger is pointed out at us humans. We are the primary cause of this crisis. 
How did we arrive in such a mess? From the mentality that natural resources are never ending. The more we ask, the more we get from nature. From Judeo-Christian prejudices that we humans are different and apart from other creatures of nature. And biological imperialism. We humans are created to conquer and rule over the world. And due to that, we are for the first time in the history of any human creatures against nature. The sixth massive extinction has already started. As Living Planet reports of 2002 shows. If we look at the graph and and if you see uh, through this that uh, through the Living Planet Index, which measures the average change in the number of individuals across the world's animal populations, we have lost more than 60% of the wildlife in less than 50 years. Humanity has whipped up, quote, by the guardians of animal, 60% of animal populations is 1970s. And if you look at the biodiversity losses by regions, Latin America and Caribbean are the first with 90% of losses, followed by Africa, 65, 66%, Asia and Pacific, 55%, and to a later, later smaller extent, the extinctions or biodiversity losses is happening to Europe and Central Asia and North America. Species extinction rate in modern time is estimated 100 to 1,000 times higher. And one out of three amphibians is threatened with extinction today. One out of four species of mammals and amphibians and birds uh, will face high risk of extinction in the very near future. Freshwater biodiversity is the most threatened than ever before. If we look for primary threats of biodiversity, everybody can understand the meaning of this graph. You can see that during the last two centuries, human population demography has skied up to 8 million, starting from almost 1 billion uh, inhabitants. Uh, and this J form of human demography is the primary causes of main threats that biodiversity is facing today. Habitat degradation and loss, habitat fragmentation, species invasion, overexploitation of natural resources, biological impacts of climate changes, pollution, all together and in a rank like shown are all contributing to this six massive extinction of biodiversity in our area. And what is conservation biology? Conservation biology is respond by the scientific community to this biodiversity crisis. The necessity to work now, not later, makes conservation biology, in every sense of the word, a crisis discipline. Conservation biologists have the duty to find intellectual and technological means that aim prevention, avoidance, mitigation, and restoration of ecological damage. Conservation biology differs from other biological sciences because we have to act before we know all facts and evidence. And in this context, conservation biology is a mixture of science and art. Conservation biology is multidisciplinary and tends to be holistic. Of course, a lot of issues, a lot of ideas, techniques, methods and means are brought in by a wide spectrum of scientists or scientific disciplines of biology, such as ecology, biogeography, systematics, genetics, evolution, epidemiology, forestry, fishery, wildlife biology, agronomy and vet sciences. 
But conservation biology includes also disciplines of social sciences, economics, and political sciences. And today, academic researchers, policymakers, and resource managers have joined intellects, professional experience, and perspectives to address local and global conservation problems. And let's come down to the most important uh, case study and the most important part of our presentation. Hydropower plants and their threats on biodiversity. Why and when? Everybody talks about, in this, if you look at the policy documents of the EU and worldwide, renewable energy sources are the ones that we have to look at and find alternatives for replacing the fossil soil, fossil, uh, fossil energy uh, sources. But uh, if not done properly, hydropower and other renewable resources of energy could have significant impacts on biodiversity if conservation and sustainable development principles are neglected, if conventions and euro directives are not implemented, National legislation is not completed and harmonized with Aki Communitaire. Law is not enforced even though it is in place. Science is not heard and not uh, consulted and not become part of the decision making. Climate change concerns are not integrated into the energy sector. Environmental assessment, audit and monitoring system is not adequate and efficient and where there is corruption. Altogether, they make this initiative, this green renewable energy, a very high threat to biodiversity in our region. You may have heard, some of you, about the tsunami of hydropower plants in the Balkans, with more than 3,000 hydropower plants, of which only in Albania, 740 of which 220 already constructed, 90 under construction, and 420 planned to be constructed. Major concerns related with that are that all hydrographic network is impacted. A good part of hydropower plants are even inside the protected areas. Of, of that in Albania, 21% are inside protected areas, including national parks. And what are the lessons learned from the past was related with the impacts on hydropower plants on biodiversity? We have now enough time and evidence to see the impacts on landscape, impacts on ecosystems, impacts on natural habitats, and impacts on species. Landscape is suffering from degradation, soil erosion, loss of interaction among structural and functional elements of landscape, those that are within the landscape connectivity, interruption of landscape dynamics, loss of aesthetic values in the landscape, and loss of historical and cultural values. Look at the ecosystems, coastal ecosystems, downstream, we have coastal erosion due to negative balance of sediments. Now, in our region, due to the hydropower dams along the major uh, river in the Balkan, Western Balkans, Jenny River, we have huge degradation uh, of the coastal uh, area, especially in the uh, downstream Buna Boyana uh, River Delta, when coastal erosion is taking not only just natural habitat, but also tourism and tourist infrastructure, uh, yielding a lot of economic losses, apart from ecological losses. More than 101 uh, kilometers of the uh, Delta Front has been taken out by the coastal erosion and huge uh, impacts on, on ecosystem. We have uh, changes in ecosystem productivity, due to the changes in water regime and nutrient transported by the river. We have weakened ecosystem resilience towards climate changes and coastal ecosystems already are very vulnerable ecosystems towards climate change. 
stream rebrand ecosystems. We have ecosystem inversion from Lotic into Atlantic. We have deepening of riverbed downstream from the dam and the erosion of riverbanks. We have changes in ecosystem productivity due to changes in water regime, nutrients, physical, chemical, and biological conditions. And we have interruption and alteration of trophic webs and web and food chains in the river biota and disruption and of interconnections of the main river with, uh, with its tributaries. Impacts on habitats, we have loss and degradation of recurrent habitats and microhabitats, including those that are priority habitats of habitat directives. Loss and degradation of natural natural lakes, such as glacial lakes, that hydropower plants sometimes are sacrificing in order to get enough water for production when there is no enough water during the main rivers. We have fragmentation of repairing habitats. We have disruption of habitat connectivity. And let's take an example, for instance, in Vyosa River, in the Brady section of the river, when you can see there are so many components with the river, like the main river flow, the secondary branch, the tertiary branch or a side of the rivers, when we have almost onion water or slow running waters and ponds that are used by very specific communities. And we have uh, branches, dead branches of river, and we have ponds, small ponds inside the river, and we have pioneer stages of vegetation, and then other net natural succession of vegetation, whether shrub vegetation, uh, and then ending up to other further successions, uh, ending up to the climbing stage of riparian habitats. And all these microhabitats uh, will, if dams are constructed, will disappear. We have impacts on species because you may know that many species to fulfill their biological cycle, cycles, they migrate from the, from the sea to the freshwater ecosystem, to rivers and vice versa. And once even a single dam is constructed, all these migratory routes are interrupted. We have isolation, population decline, and extinction of native autochthonic species in the river. Replacement of native autochthonic species with allochthon or alien species. And then at the end, we have loss and, and decline of biodiversity, species biodiversity or diversity. We have uh, uh, enough evidence coming from this publication uh, on the Balkan rivers, endangered fish species, distributions and threats from hydropower development, uh, published in by the uh, River Watch. And according to this study, out of 113 freshwater species of the Balkan Peninsula, 49 species are endangered due to loss of habitats between 50 to 100 percent from hydropower dams. 11 endemic species are extinct, seven species are critically endangered, 24 species are endangered, and 68 out of 69 endemic species of the Balkan species. Uh, habitat loss due to hydropower plants is estimated between 30 to 100 percent. And let's take some few single examples, such as European eel, which is critically endangered according to BioCN, and hydropower dams along rivers in the Balkans is the major threat to regional population of this species. And another example dealing with, uh, related with Pindus stone lodge, Oxynomachelus pindus, and of course this species is vulnerable, but more than 100 hydropower plants in Albania may put at risk 50% of the global habitat, habitat of the species. Another species, Barbus herbeli or Western Balkan barbul. Hundreds of hydropower plants are constructed or planned inside distribution range of this species in the region, leading to 70% of habitat loss for the species. Or oh, we may risk that hundreds of species linked with riverine ecosystems may disappear without even knowing that. 
let's take a, a chronology of events dealing with Viosa River case. Uh, a, 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 kind, a study case, but also um, uh, uh, one of those battles that we consider as conservationists that we have already partially won so far. The, the Safe Blue Hearts of Europe campaign was launch, launched in the 2013 by uh, River Watch. And immediately after that, Viosta River, Save the Last Wild River of Europe campaign was launched with the participation of Albanian NGO Eco Albania and supported by Mava Foundation, River Watch, Air Natur. Albanian uh, NGO Eco Albania had a court case uh, against construction of hydropower plant in Pochem. Um, and due to that, this project was in hold. After we have a science week in Viosa River organized with participation of scientists from many European countries like Germany, Austria, uh, and uh, other parts of um, like America and uh, and uh, due to this study and participation of uh, local and international researchers on river science, we could manage to put together uh, a special edition of the journal um, all about uh, Austria to make enough evidence on what is going on and what is going to happen with Viosa if a single dam in Viosa River is built. And we uh, launch an international uh, science uh, conference on Viosa on November 2000. We had a petition of the international scientific community uh, uh, that was handed to Albanian authorities, including the president of the country. We had organized a science week on Viosa. This time, main tributaries of river of Viosa, such as uh, Doncha. Uh, we have Shushitsa River and Trinos River. Uh, we had a Viosa River Research, river research Center established in Tepelena in June 21. We have a global petition launched for Viosa River National Park, uh, trying to not uh, be satisfied with the government decision to declare the Viosa River as a nature reserve, fourth category. We wanted to make sure that a category such as National Park is decent and devoted for nature, for the protection of nature by the diversity of this uh, uh, quite unique river ecosystem in Europe. And uh, we had Albanian government decision to declare Viosa River as nature, nature reserve that we uh, opposed. Uh, and uh, due to this pressure and international pressure, Albanian government uh, and Patagonia company signed a memorandum of understanding for declaring Viosa River National Park in June 2020, 2022, and the uh, government in Patagonia, the government of Albania and Patagonia endorsed IUCN study on River Viosa National Park. And uh, we have, on, in the meantime, several projects that are running in, in Viosa through which we could further make sure that uh, Viosa is protected and sustainable development project can be designed and implemented in a sound way. But again, NGOs continue their advocacy and legal battle for hydropower plants in Viosa and other tributaries of Viosa River, uh, because as we, we won the, the court case, but uh, the concessioners had already made an appeal and this appeal will take place sooner or later, but we want to make sure that by the time we have enough evidence and uh, developments 
that are already taking place in Biosa are not reversible by any decision that might be uh, taking place by the court. Um, as mentioned before, due to several studies made on Biosa River watershed, we could publish the special edition of Acta Zobota Austria, with dozens of articles and research papers were published. And we had a separate uh, publication on measuring sediment transport and morphodynamics at Biosa River and other contributing uh, books like contributions by the diversity knowledge of our river basin in, in Greek part of the Biosa River watershed, study on renewable energy sources in the Aos basin, uh, River Viosa baseline survey on biodiversity potential impacts and legal framework for other power development that was used as a main uh, in, uh, source of uh, in evidence and information to to uh, oppose the Asia or in, uh, environment and social impact assessment report produced by the client uh, showing that uh, all the data that was there uh, was uh, misinterpretation and fake uh, and uh, appealing to that to the government authorities to reconsider their uh, their uh, hydropower plants along the Vyasa River and we had uh, IUCN study for Biosa River Valley based on uh, st uh, IUCN standards. Uh, and then we have forest in Biosa River basing assessment uh, of the existing situation, because we know that riparian forest along the Biosa River has been subject of human inter uh, human pressures. And uh, some of these uh, are uh, very, in are degraded and need uh, some intervention. Uh, events accompanying what uh, so we these are some of uh, shots that are taken by the big event uh, scientists for Viosa that took part during the first uh, week science in, in Viosa River uh, and media were invited into even international media uh, so it was well broadcasted uh, and to the public and to medias and we had uh, other activities uh, associated with that. We had uh, um, rafting activities uh, along the Viosa uh, and uh, well, also scientists were, were part of this event. And we had a number of uh, research campaigns uh, and field missions uh, in Viosa. And uh, as already mentioned, we had already open a research, a research center in, in Viosa and Tepelena, uh, that is uh, another facility provided for uh, researchers, young students, master students, PhD students to use it uh, to make their diploma thesis on the subject of different subject of Viosa. And uh, we had uh, the yeah, international campaign of, of proclaiming Viosa National Park now and these events are taking place in Tirana and other main capital cities of Europe. Uh, as due to all these pressures and events and ways of communication, uh, we had ended up to memorandum of understanding signed between the Ministry of uh, Tourism and Environment in Albania and the Patagonia company. And uh, authorities uh, show their will to work to work uh, towards proclaiming the Viosa River National Park as an obligation and responding for future generations. And uh, I want to just to message taken by, by the CEO and uh, executive director of Riverwatch, the man who was behind all these initiatives and activities that taken place in along the Viosa and for the Viosa. Um, and I'm quoting the message that comes from Tirana today has the potential to extend far beyond the Viosa, the concept of a wild river national park, which protects not only the main waterway, but also its tributar tributaries is unique. At the Viosa, we are witnessing a new model of protection for other rivers in Europe, which are threatened by dam projects and other forms of pressure. We need to think bigger to protect our nature.
And with that, I'm ending up this presentation and lecture. And uh, I thank you for your attention and uh, uh, I'm opening to look at your at your at the chat and uh, see and take and uh, give answer to any question that you might have. So I'm trying to to take some of the answers, some of the questions that you might you might have related with the presentation, because some of it are related with the technical problems we had at the very beginning. So the one of the question I see here from Maya, Yosa River is our case study for the first week, or we should find new examples. Of course, the Yosa River is the one that is even simple for you because you have already uh, quite a lot of materials, uh, videos shown. You have uh, papers, uh, articles that are advised by the tutors. Uh, but of course, if you find other examples that are similar with ones and you have enough evidence and data, you can of course apply and choose as a case studies other cases as well in the Balkans. But it's up to you. Important is that you feel confident you have enough data and references to use during your essay. So uh, this is another question. So should we choose another case or feel free? But Viosa is also a quite interesting topic that you could and you could find a lot of things to find uh, as a as main topics for your essays as, as teams. Important is that you have uh, uh, are able to put things in right in a logic way. So starting from the values and and then uh, identify and ranking the threats and then try to uh, making references for that and then try to make your uh, you know all this data and facts put in a in a uh, in a rational uh, way by having them uh, uh, let's say put right and and correct and clear important is that through clear messages you could have an impact to your targets or audience and you might be even thinking about and discussing internally in groups uh, or inside your team which are which are the type of audience you really want to impact or to influence with your essay with your messages So can you comment about the paper of this week? What do you expect? You have, Marco, you have already in your platform for so the first week, you have the main chapter from, from the book, chapter 10, from Biodiversity for All, and, and then you have 
various papers selected on Vyosa as a case study. And by looking through this, uh, as, through these uh, papers and uh, understanding the papers and understanding values, threats, uh, and, uh, and, and scientific arguments on why to protect or why to and how to address this concern or that concern, you might be able to build up your essay. Yes, the presentation, Maya again, uh, Davkova. Uh, you will get the presentation. All it is registered, uh, and uh, you would uh, you could uh, have it uh, soon after this webinar. Uh, so Darko will take will make sure that uh, this presentation is is there, and you can you may use it anytime. What do you think about fish tracks pathways? Because a lot of developers mention it as answer of on all biodiversity threats with uh, either power. Of course, this is quite an interesting subject. And uh, if you look at the, at the document uh, or the book that I already mentioned you about the impacts of hydropower dams on the threatened fish on freshwater fish in the Balkans, you might find other examples there and you might find enough enough arguments to build your your essay about. So uh, one from Milica, I can see that the most of the diversity is lost in the so-called undeveloped, undeveloped regions, in which the growth rates are the highest. Since a lot of production has been moved from developed countries to developing countries, I think, I think that the population growth is not the biggest issue for the diversity, is the exploitation of nature and people by big corporations that stole natural resources from the locals. I can only say that's right. So you can not only, but of course, at the very end, we come up with sooner or later with the cumulative impacts of this exponential growth of, uh, of uh, human demography. Sooner or later, uh, due to globalism, companies, uh, big dealers, whatever, will try to exploit any piece of nature, whatever it is. And uh, but Brazil, let's take Brazil itself. Even Brazil has has increased in population uh, in Brazil as four, four times higher than by mid century, last century. So Brazil itself um, had, uh, let's say, the so-called uh, ecological footprint that was 1 to 28 and now it is far further down 1 to 8 or 9 and as you can see uh, of course in the Brazil you, you, you don't you can't blame only Brazilians as a as a source of this kind of you know very high rate of biodiversity losses there there are also big companies from the developing countries from Western countries Europe and America that are exploiting those resources and selling it as a, a way of development for the countries like Brazil that is now uh, becoming uh, part of uh, big four. Welcome, Malta, Doga. Yes, I get it. Can can we take the Uvach River instead of Yosa River? Yes, you can. Again, I'm telling that if you have evidence, if you have references, if you have paper to which you because you, you might know that during the assignment you have at least to, ref, to refer to three 
uh, references or sources of information, and you have to put th things in the right way. Of course, you can do it. Yes. Well, are there examples in reverse ratio in the Balkans? Well, I don't know any, but it might be. Uh, there are similar projects in other countries, in the, even in Central uh, Europe, not only UK. Uh, of course, sooner or later, we have to deal with all these reverse restoration projects, even in our region, because we have already lost some of these rivers due to not only hydropower, but also due to hydropower dams. And we have to make uh, this kind of uh, wetland restoration and river restoration uh, in the future. Yeah. You might Google and you might find you might find enough evidence about this 30, 36 hotspot biodiversity hotspots in the world. So now you could through the very various sources of information you could uh, in even for Mediterranean you have a publication on uh, Mediterranean basing as a as a biodiversity hotspot. Uh, have you by any chance participate in the Etna River Scientific Week? I didn't, I couldn't participate, I wanted, but I had other engagement during that week and I couldn't, but I was, of course, uh, informed about uh, the outcomes of this uh, scientific, scientific research uh, in, uh, in the Naretnica in River. And it is, of course, uh, a very spectacular river with so many uh, values and uh, pristine habitats that deserve protection and uh, of course if you have data and you are very confident with that you could use your Neretvica uh, river as a as a case study uh, for your assignment yeah why so many hydropower projects in albania and not wind and solar power power plants instead we have already started. There are some projects uh, in a very la last stage of uh, being already constructed in terms of solar solar energy or solar power. And we are now open the bid for wind farm or wind power plants and the different bidders are, are competing for that. Uh, of course, uh, diversi diversification of energy sources has been one of the major uh, of our major uh, topic that we have discussed and uh, argued to the government and uh, at the very end the government of Albania decided to go not only for hydro and in the recent years the, the focus is given to to wind and uh, solar power. So when we talk about biodiversity, can we make a connection with the eels in a horrid lake, which travel to the Saga Sea to spend to return to Horrid Lake? And, but uh, with the construction of a hydropower plant in Dreamy, this species is threatened. That's right. So we have already lost one of the rivers and the main and and the main pathway of the trout. Uh, of the uh, uh, sorry of the eel from the from the Orid Lake could not reach any longer into into the Sagasta Sea. So we are not only this river, but major rivers of Albania now are not having the uh, the European eel uh, in many bunches of uh, other rivers in Albania. It is almost disappeared. 
but we have still a very healthy population of European eel in Vyosa River. So are there concrete activities that were implemented for restoration uh, about repairing vegetation along the river? The studies already are made and there are proposals for some uh, wetland, uh, let's say from some uh, repair and restoration projects to, to take part along some of the, some of the river sections, uh, especially the ones that have been impacted by the disease. Uh, when I say so, I have in mind, uh, you know, Oriental Plain, Platanos Orientalis, uh, that has been almost disappeared from from the Vyosa River in the last couple of years. So I'm one of the co-authors of Society in Perfect Very great, thank you for sharing your, your link for this presentation. Selma? Did you did you conduct initial research in terms of negative impacts of, on building hydropower on, on Riosa River? No, but uh, as I mentioned, you know, it was a scientific community, Albanian ones and foreign ones that were part of the research activities along the Riosa, then put all these uh, facts and make a, made proper analysis of the, of the data collected. And so through this, we prepare a document that is already produced here and shown to you, a baseline survey on, uh, on Vyosa River, uh, showing what are the values, what are the concerns, what are international and regional importance of this unique uh, river ecosystem, uh, what are the real threats imposed by the dams and not the ones that are selling as social minor threats by the company that produced the EIA EA report or Asia report. Uh, so, of course, uh, we were uh, lucky to to in, uh, to have a lot of contributions from uh, the scientific community to make it happen. Can you take examples not only rivers but also the mountain? Of course, you can. But as I as I told you, within you have uh, some time limits to consider as as a group. You have to to have enough material to digest, and you have to discuss among uh, among each other as a group, uh, which is a topic that is more you feel more comfortable and share the same uh, opinion, and then you have to uh, to discuss about which is going which topic you have to and find a proper, uh, proper title, attractive title for that. And then you have to put uh, all these arguments inside in a logical way and in a clear, uh, provide clear messages for that. But it's only a matter of uh, availability of sources of information that you might have. If you do have those, uh, or if, you, if you find those sources, you can make it, yeah. So I don't see any other major, or I don't see any other. So I will, I, I thank you for your, <clears throat> thank you for your uh, uh, comments and also questions. And if I really miss mm -hmm. any of them, just me? tell me. Sorry, yes? Hi, my name is Yelena and uh, several, several of us have the same question. Thank yes. you for the presentation. And uh, could you please tell us, is the idea of the assignment to try to do additional conservation campaign with focus on biodiversity in Biosa? Is that our understanding? You may also, of course, you may. As I told you, the 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 battle for Biosa is not yet over. We are 
making progress. We had this government will uh, to declare Diosa as a national park, but none of us is really safe that there is no, there are no plans for building hydropower dams along Diosa. At least two concessions that are given by for Viosa, which is Calivace and Pochem, are still there waiting because the court case is not yet finished. They have appeal in the appeal court, and the appeal court will take this case and will once it is arriving, and then we have to really make and uh, keep this campaign alive because nothing is for sure. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. So for the assignment this week, I, I hope that you have already. I know that you know already know your your fellow team uh, members and you have already chosen your you know team leader um, and then that will coordinate the group work and group discussion and dynamics and you should of course within internally in, in the team should have somebody to keep reporting and recording uh, so that whatever you you produce during your discussion in in your team is uh, tracked and uh, at the very end of it after brainstorming you could choose the topic you feel more comfortable with but again as I you have to digest all the materials study materials that have been you have been advised to and of course you have to really read through carefully to papers that you have been advised and you have already links or other resources that might you might choose if you find uh, not you know Viosa but another river as more comfortable for you to work with and of course you have to if you have question of or in the process you are stuck you might ask for uh, you know help through our tutors Dayan and Maya are are there to help you and if you have particular questions on uh, with uh, regarding with the contents of of the of what you are doing you are of course more than welcome to write me directly and i could try to to be of help to you but remember you have to take notice of uh, of your engagement and uh, work and cooperation uh, it is very important that you prepare at the very end not only just uh, the assignment the pdf assignment with uh, 1200 words uh, on the subject and the topics you will choose as, as more appropriate for you but you have to show also uh, your contribution to this and you have to measure your contribution you have to measure the way you have been uh, communicating and cooperating with each other uh, you have to mention also your uh, your dilemmas and your problems that you were encountered and how you solved it. this is all part of the learning process and this is all the, the logic behind uh, this uh, this platform uh, on learn uh, online uh, learning platform on environment communication it is a learning process and we have to grow through this uh, active participating in this uh, learning process. And you have to uh, be uh, yeah, uh, sending your assignments uh, timely, meaning that uh, if you don't uh, or you fail to send to send uh, your assignment within the deadline, which is the end of uh, of the day of uh, of Sunday, you have to uh, know that you could not be graded and uh, you could not be yeah assessed i i don't i don't see that this is going to to happen but it is important that you participate you work hard as a, as a team and you you measure your progress 
and uh, you are you feel satisfied with your product at the very end. That means that you have to work every day and, and you have to 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 be organized and uh, uh, within team and uh, within this week, uh, the team leader has uh, the responsibility to coordinate the work and the reporter should take make sure that everything is uh, uh, tracked and everything uh, agreed is, is there and then you have to draft uh, your assignment and you have to to readjust it and you have to make interventions and to formulate and to com to compile messages in, and to put the things uh, in the right way uh, so that you could really have an impact by not just by to uh, to me or to to the tutors but also to the audience uh, that you really have in mind when you prepare such an assignment. And you have not to uh, forget that uh, um, you have only one of you, that mean, meaning uh, most of the case it would be the team leader that should upload your assignment. Uh, and then together with the assignment, you should you should also put your individual self-assessment uh, for the work conducted during the week. Uh, so each of you individually should send this self-assignment, uh, so self-assessment uh, as part of self-assessment as part of the assignment. Yeah. Sorry. So if there is no any more question, uh, and there is there is no any message or other announcement by tutors like Dayan and Maya, if they are still standing, and there is something that. Uh, they want to, and if I don't miss anything regarding the, the assignment, uh, but I don't see any, so I may I may close this uh, this webinar, and I again would like to thank you for your kind uh, comments and attention, and I'm really very much hoping to see your assignment and and your good work. Uh, that you would put uh, as a team together, all together, and uh, I'm more than sure that you will not. Uh, you will work hard. You will uh, look uh, very carefully on the documents that uh, you have, and look at the videos. And, and of course, you could try other sources of information that you might navigate through, and uh, you might uh, make sure that uh, everything uh, that is provided is helping you to reach uh, what you really want to achieve through this uh, first week. Um, so it is uh, very, very kind to, and I'm very much hoping to uh, to see good works and good results and good essays uh, from your guys. Any ideas how to check for team members? Uh, I think that you should contact directly your tutor, Maya and Dayan, re regarding this issue. Hello, everybody. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. OK, Maya is here. Uh, I just wanted to tell, I, I didn't see who asked the question, but uh, in one of the emails that arrived from the envir environmental communication uh, management team, uh, there was a PDF with the team members and the contacts from for each of the teams. Uh, 
So you can check your email using Outlook, Microsoft Outlook, and then there, there you will find information about which group do you belong and where you can find the contact of the people you are that are your teammates. So I think that is that is quite easy actually. And then on the forum section, you can uh, chat with them in the open forum, or and also you can chat in that with them in the group forum that is assigned to each group separately. So that's actually it. If I just may add something, Thank you, I would, Maya. yeah, sorry, I You're would welcome. ask, yeah, I would ask uh, people just to not chat the information about their groups to the forum for everybody. So rather chat for your in your own group forum. We also all of us received the link for our forum groups, yeah. all of us in, in our email. So please chat there because we've been, I, I personally, I believe that's the case for everybody else. I've been getting many emails that are not at all referred to my groups or to any tasks from other people who are listening to these lectures. So please, if you want to communicate with your group's member, then go to the your group forum. Not Do not write to all of us because we get spammed with many emails which are not necessarily at, at all. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, but uh, we are only at the beginning of the program. So I believe that people would get familiar with, you know, the online platform and the uh, group chat. So maybe we should be patient for maybe just a few more days. And, and then I believe yeah. that the groups will communicate within themselves and they, they will not uh, send the general emails. I know I know that uh, right now it can be uh, confusing and overwhelming the Moodle study platform and also the amount of emails that are arriving to everybody. But I think that it will sort it out, sort itself in a few days just to people get familiar with the way how the platform works. So um, you should check your Outlook emails which you got from the environmental communication and then in the mail you can find all the information that are considering you personally or the group that you are belong yeah, and also we have this introductory uh, course which is really useful because everything explained there into details and um yeah, so it's easier. And you always, if you have any issues, since some of us had uh, some issues uh, yeah. joining uh, with our accounts last week, you can contact the administrator so uh, directly, and they're going to sort everything out. Yeah, thank you both of you for your yeah, clarifications and explanations. It's very important that we sh show some kind of patience during the first one of a couple of days and unless you know we are losing you know the people motivation uh, so we have to help them and to be to be um, sympathy with with sympathy with their problems that uh, they might have yeah well uh, thank you professor i would like just like to remind people who possibly weren't at the last meeting before this webinar to check the presentation. The whole presentation is in a video that is posted and you can access it and uh, look the introduction to the courses and also to the platform where you can learn everything about how to use platform pro properly. OK, thank you. I will not. Uh, Thank you, Maya. OK. So if there is no any other intervention, um, I would again thank everybody for being so patient and uh, uh, going through this first webinar. Uh, and uh, I wish you good luck with your with your assignment and work in the group.
and we'll be in touch during all the week. Thank you very much and good night. Thank you. Thank you.